Hi, let's discuss Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease or CJD. Here we will discuss the CJD, its nature, presentation, diagnosis and treatment. This presentation is made using the information obtained from the UK National Guideline, a link to which can be found below this presentation. When we think about infection, it inevitably comes to mind what is causing it, the pathogen. These pathogens could be bacteria, virus, fungus, or parasites. But another class of pathogen is there that is both strange and unique. It is called prion. Prions are nothing but protein. It neither has cells like us, bacteria, fungus or parasites, nor it is like a virus, which may not have a cell but have nucleic acids like DNA or RNA. It is just a protein but with an altered structure. In normal protein, the amino acids are predominantly folded in alpha helix, but in diseased prion protein, they are beta helix instead. This change makes these proteins infectious and resistant to many commonly used sterilizing processes. This diseased protein has the capability of infecting other proteins. When it comes in contact with a normal protein it may induce a structural change, involving refolding to a conformer with an increased beta helix structure. Its effect is most severe on the brain, leading to an appearance with multiple vacuoles. The name transmissible spongiform encephalopathy or TSE has been derived from this. This disease is transmissible or can be transmitted from one individual to another, causing disease of the brain that is, encephalopathy. And it makes the brain looks like a sponge with many vacuoles. There are many types of TSE. It affects both humans and animals. Human diseases are CJD, variant CJD, fatal familial insomnia, Kuru, variably protease sensitive prionopathy, etc. Some animal diseases are scrapie, bovine spongiform encephalopathy, mad cow disease, and other encephalopathies. You might be wondering why this has been rearranged like this. Although CJD and variant CJD share a similar name, they are different. CJD affects individual worldwide. It was first described in 1920s by the German neurologists Hans Gerhard Kreutzfeldt and Alphonse Maria Jacob. BSE was first described in the UK in the 1980s in cattle. The number steadily decreased after banning meat and bone meals for the cattle. The variant CJD was first described in the 1990s in humans. It has a strong epidemiological and laboratory link to the BSE or mad cow disease. This slide will show you different types of CJD. The commonest type of CJD is the sporadic type. It has no relation to mad cow disease and can affect any individual in any part of the world. Why it affects specific individuals is unknown. In the UK, it causes approximately 120 deaths a year. The second type of CJD is a disease inherited from the parents, the familial CJD, also called genetic CJD. In the UK, we see about 5 to 10 deaths a year. The third form is the variant CJD, which is likely to have developed in individuals who consumed food contaminated with BSE. 178 cases of variant CJD has been reported in the UK and some more outside. Iatrogenic CJD occurs when the disease gets transmitted via instruments or tissues contaminated with prion protein. We aim to prevent this from happening. Clinical features we can divide it into two parts. 1. Neurological sign symptoms, and 2. Behavioral or psychiatric sign symptoms. The sporadic form usually affects individuals who are more than 50 years old. Patients present with both neurological and behavioral disturbances. Clinically rapidly progressing dementia often raises the suspicion of CJD. Patients also show movement disorders like myoclonus, pyramidal or extrapyramidal symptoms, visual and balance disturbance and akinetic mutism. 
Life expectancy is short, typically months from the time of diagnosis. Familial CJD usually presents signs and symptoms similar to the sporadic CJD, but in a much younger population. The life expectancy is usually a few years from the diagnosis. The variant CJD tend to present with sensory disturbances and psychiatric symptoms like anxiety and depression. Neurological symptoms are manifested after a few months. The life expectancy is, on average, 14 months from the diagnosis. This slide shows what are the early and late signs and symptoms of both neurological and behavioral presentation. I wouldn't go into the details but if you are interested, this slide would be available on microregistrar.com, with all other information on this presentation. How do we test for Creutzfeldt-Jakob disease? Every case of suspected CJD should be discussed with the National CJD Research and Surveillance Unit or National Pre and Clinic. Clinical neurologists can help with the diagnosis. The tests that can be used are MRI brain. It may show typical changes like a symmetrical high signal in the posterior thalamus. EEG. EEG may show generalized triphasic periodic complex at approximately 1 per second. CSF can be analyzed for 1433 and tau protein. The diagnosis can be confirmed by brain biopsy. Genetic tests can look for specific mutations responsible for genetic CJD. Transmission. There is no evidence that CJD can be transmitted from person to person by close or casual contact. The methods of transmission that have been reported are eating food contaminated with prion. For example, Variant CJD is likely to have resulted from consuming contaminated meat products. Another prion disease, Kuru, was associated with cannibalism. Iatrogenic CJD has been reported from the use of infected tissue like the human pituitary derives growth hormones, dura mater graft, corneal graft and use of contaminated instruments like neurosurgical instruments or EEG leads. Variant CJD has been transmitted via transfusion of non-depleted red blood cells and plasma products. As you can see some tissues were responsible for the transmission of CJD, we are going to see which tissues are considered high risk, medium risk and low risk. You can find the list here in the UK CJD guideline, but let us make a summary, to help us remember. In the guideline, you will find a chart that explains in which tissue the prion proteins have been found and what is level of infectivity these tissues have. Unfortunately, to make things complicated the tissue infectivity does not correlate well with the absence or presence of the prion protein. For practical purposes, it is better to concentrate on the level of infectivity columns. I have highlighted it. The tissues that are most infective for both CJD and variant CJD are brain, spinal cord, cranial nerves, cranial ganglion, pituitary gland, the optic nerve, posterior part of the eye and retina. Spinal and olfactory ganglion are considered medium risk tissue. There is certain tissue outside this group that is considered moderate risk only for variant CJD. You may see these are mostly lymphoid tissues. These are tonsil, appendix, spleen thymus, adrenal gland, and gut lymphatics. You may ask that when discussing the mode of transmission I mentioned some tissue that was implicated in transmission, but in the previous slide, they were considered low risk. These tissues are blood, CSF, cornea, and dura mater. Let us have a look, why it is so. Blood. Variant CJD has been transmitted by blood and plasma, so why it is low risk? Please note that it is considered low risk but not, no risk. Contact with a small volume of blood, including inoculation injury, is considered low risk. However, a large volume of blood and blood products may carry a risk. It is particularly important in those patients who require regular or frequent blood transfusions due to their background disease. Following conditions are considered as a risk. For CJD, 1. 
individuals who have been identified as having received blood or blood components from 300 or more donors since January 1990. 2. Individuals who have given blood to someone who went on to develop variant CJD. 3. Individuals who have received blood from someone who has also given blood to a patient who went on to develop variant CJD. 4. Individuals who have been treated with certain implicated UK-sourced plasma products between 1990 and 2001. For variant CJD. Individuals who have received labile blood components like whole blood, red cells, white cells or platelets, from a donor who later went on to develop variant CJD. Please remember that the risk of the bloodborne virus should still need to be considered in situations like inoculation or Sharps injury. Duramata. Duramata is considered low risk, but it has been said that procedures in which Duramata was implanted prior to 1992 are high risk procedures. There is no prion protein detected in the Duramata. Dural grafts are associated with CJD transmission probably due to contamination by the brain and lengthy period of implantation in the CNS. CSF. CSF is considered low risk but it was suggested infectivity proven in experimental transmission studies. The experimental study was an animal study and in CSF no prion protein was detected. So it is considered low risk. A lumbar puncture must be performed with a single-use kit, which is destroyed after the test. Cornea. The cornea is considered low risk but CJD transmission was reported to be associated with corneal graft. Again there was no prion protein detected in the cornea. In the case where transmission happened, the cornea was most likely contaminated with the posterior eye components. Treatment. There's currently no cure for CJD, so treatment aims to relieve symptoms and keep the patient comfortable. Sedation, muscle relaxant, pain relief, antidepressants etc. are used as and when needed. That finishes the presentation but let us summarize what we learned. 1. CJD is caused by abnormally folded proteins called PRINs. 2. There are four types of CJD. Sporadic CJD, genetic CJD, variant CJD and iatrogenic CJD. 3. Sporadic CJD is the commonest form of CJD. 4. Variant CJD is associated with BSE or mad cow disease. 5. Iatrogenic CJD spread through medical treatment blood transfusion, surgery or treatment with contaminated human hormones. Iatrogenic CJD is what we try to prevent in the healthcare setting. 6. CJD presents with neurological and psychiatry symptoms and progresses rapidly. 7. Diagnosis is clinical, assisted by CSF, MRI, EEG, biopsy and genetic studies. 8. Neurological tissues are high-slash-moderate risk for all CJD. Lymphatic tissues are moderately risky for variant CJD. 9. Blood, CSF, body fluids are low risk, follow standard IPC when dealing with these samples. 10. CJD is not transmitted person to person via close contact. The patient does not need isolation, standard precaution is okay in the ward. 11. Treatment is only supportive. Thank you.